Hello, lovely viewers. You're welcome to another wonderful Saturday. It's the Ask Pastor Sunday show. Pastor is already seated, and we are going to go straight into answering your questions now. Every other announcement will be done at the end of this video. I am your host for today, Dr. Bien Sufficient. I believe you are going to be greatly blessed. If you've not sent in your question yet, please leave your question as a comment under this video you're seeing now. Invite your friends, and we are going to start immediately. Remember, we are ending the show today exactly maybe 5 to 10 minutes to 9. So please invite your loved ones, let them be seated and know that we are kicking off immediately. Thank you so much for joining us today and I know you're going to be greatly blessed. Let's go to Pastor now. Good evening, Pastor. How are you My doing, My honor. Sir? <laughs> I'm okay. You're you looking look, great. You look great yourself. You thank look great. you. <laughs> Wonderful combination. Wow. Thank Unusual. You, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so we already have a handful of questions for you, and we are going to go straight due to your schedules today. Okay. I know your day today has been very busy and yes. tight, and several meetings still yet to be accomplished. Thank you for sparing this time, for giving us this time, and um, you know, despite your busy schedule, making all this time for us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Pastor. The first question here for you today is saying, there are people who are married to two wives before they became born again. Then the church asks them to divorce one. Is this right? That's a very serious question. Yeah. Uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament, the Bible teaches that it is only one man to a woman yes. and one woman to a man. God made them a man and a woman. Yes. So, I can probably understand the position of those missionaries and churches that make them to divorce. But would, would that be the right thing to do in terms of Christian faith, Christian love and moral? Who chooses, who chooses who to go? <laughs> and how can a person's marriage be obstructly ended like that without any fault of hers, mm -hmm. our own, the other lady that has to go. Yeah. And what then happens to her? Is anybody thinking about her feelings and emotions okay. as a human being? Hmm. I think it's a very dicey situation. I would probably say, if I were to take that decision, okay. decision that maybe it's better to keep the other wives in the home or in the family house of the king, but maybe the king will simply not sleep with all of them. Okay, so just what's, with one. What's the benefit of them staying then? At least, uh, she will not have that public disgrace. Well, that would prevent her in case she would have had a future remarrying from remarrying. Well, people who have taken her away because she was second wife, you think they were allowed for second marriage? <laughs> no, if they are divorcing, that means she has the right to remarry them. That's what I'm saying, that people who believe that the theology, yeah. they will also be most likely believe that if you have already divorced, that you don't have right to believe because Jesus said don't marry a divorcee. Those kind of religious people, that's the way they approach it. Okay. Okay. That anybody who marries a divorcee is committing adultery also. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people will say. Okay, so what should be, you're saying what should be the right thing to be done in this situation? I think the right thing just... to be done should be to keep the relationship okay. because marriage is more than sex. All right. Marriage is more about relationship. Okay. You know, you just married, so you're a young married woman. <laughs> but when you when you live in marriage like for over twenty years, yeah. like me, you will discover that marriage is maybe five percent or one percent sex, and ninety five percent or ninety eight percent relationship. Okay. So just mm -hmm. remove the sex and keep the ninety eight percent relationship and family and be family. Okay. So what about the other ladies' emotional desires, though? Uh, it depends on how old they are. Okay. And, you know, because sometimes when people are older, they have less of that. But they are really more interested more in the 
in the emotional, not sexual uh, okay. needs. And that emotional needs could be met just by him being there for them. You see, for a woman, there are four expressions of love. And uh, sex is only the last one. Mm -hmm. For a woman, uh, the other expressions of love might be even more important. But if she doesn't get the other expressions of love, sex to her will be as an abuse okay. or as being used. So this man could provide the other forms of love to her without giving the sex. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so it's a very complex situation. Yeah. Very complex. The second person said, do you think when people say I can do all things through Christ, Christ Jesus that strengthens me, it's misinterpreted from Philippians 4.13? When people say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, do you think it's a misinterpretation of Philippians 4.13? I would have liked to ask the person asking that question, yeah. where did they get that suggestion from that it could be a misinterpretation? Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe this person, I'm just guessing, I'm not in his mind. Maybe it's from probably just confessing without backing it with work or something. Oh. I can do all things in Christ Jesus means what it says. Yeah. That through the help of Christ, that a believer in Christ will be able to do everything. But what he was talking about there specifically was about suffering loss, living in abundance, or living in lack. Okay, yeah, I think I'm getting to understand this person now. So is it maybe, is it really possible that a believer can do all things? Like we know we are humans and we have some limitations and all that. Is that really possible? Is quoting that scripture when you're facing a tax that you know it's, you don't have the capabilities for it, is it not a misinterpretation of that scripture? Maybe let's see it from that angle. Uh, potentially, we can do all things. Okay. But you still need to pay your dues. You still need to... Do your due diligence. Yeah, do your due diligence. You still need to be fit to be able to do it. For example, I might not be able to carry uh, 200 kilograms of weight now yeah. uh, because I didn't train for it. But So if you train for it, mm -hmm. then potentially you might have the possibility to do it. But you will not be able to do it now because you are not fit. You didn't go through your due diligence. Wow. The same thing with my, every believer. I wrote in my book, every, believer, every person, every Christian could become a millionaire. Okay. And people say, why, how? People have different calling. I say it doesn't depend on calling. It just depends on learning the laws. If you learn the laws and abide by the laws, you can be. So the same thing, but people, now it sounds as if it was not possible. But you have to, the reason it's not possible, yes, it's not been possible for a lot of people, but not because it's Christ Jesus or not Christ Jesus. It's just because people have not paid their due diligence. Okay, great answer, Pastor. Thank <laughs> you. This person is saying, good evening, Pastor. What is the stand of the, Bi of the Bible on this? A man is married to two wives. Okay, I think and became born again and wants to serve in the pastoral team of the church. I mean, wants to participate in leading a department in the church. And he is still married to the two women. What should be done? What's your stand on that? You connected to the first question, question right? Question, but a bit, in a bit different. Okay, so can manner. you help me? Help so this person is still married to his two wives, but he wants to join the pastoral team of the church. He wants to be a minister. He has a desire for this. What's your stand on it? Should he be allowed? What mm. should be done? It depends on the stance of the church concerning the first question we take. Okay. If the stance of the church is that he has to... Uh, so leave one of Let the ladies, one go. Yeah. then he's got to obey the standard of the church, the, requir the, the requirements, requirements of, of the, the church, church. Yeah. Okay. before they allow him to serve. Okay. But on a neutral stand, let's say without the requirements of the church, is it going to be something you think it's acceptable for a man with two wives to be in a position of leadership in the church as a pastor? No, the pastor says anybody who desires, the Bible says anybody who desires to be a bishop, bishop must yeah. be the husband of one wife. Yeah. So that disqualifies that particular person. Okay. That's the one I will go by. Okay. Great pastor. Then this person is saying, 
if you once had so much passion and strength for a situation and it suddenly goes away, does that mean God has changed his mind about you fulfilling that call? And if no, how do you revive your passion again? Passion will come and go uh, in everything, even in marriage. Okay. Passion could come and go in regards to anything because passion is a thing that needs to be fed. Passion must be cultivated. Passion must be fed. So if you have passion naturally for something, it doesn't, mean that, it doesn't really mean that you are going to sustain it. So you've got to cultivate it and feed it. Okay. So it really is not really dependent on God. Um, it depends on the laws of nature and our nature as human beings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it is our duty to keep our passion going. Yes. So the second part of the question is, what do you do if this, to revive this passion? Uh, it depends on the thing. But okay. basic principle is that you've got to study uh, more on that subject read more about the reward, meditate more about the reward, read more and meditate more about the purpose of that okay. passion, the goal, the reasons for it. Think more and refreshing your emotions, your passion, your mind by bringing yourself more into that situation, into that situation and circumstances where that thing is going on or is happening. And then finally, make sure that you divert your focus from every other thing that is causing distraction and bring back your focus to that thing. Mm -hmm. And when you bring back your focus to the, on that thing, make sure you concentrate on it. Mm -hmm. Because whatsoever we focus on becomes our reality. And whatsoever we focus on increases. Because focus magnifies. So you, when you focus and begin to focus on that thing, it will increase your passion. It will magnify your passion. And yeah, it's going to, you know, it's going to increase whatever feeling you were having before then. Great, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this person is saying, what are the top 10 books on national transformation you will recommend that I should read? I have gotten your Nigerian book and church shift. They are incredible and life-changing. I love you, sir. Thank you in advance. Uh, the next one you should get is, oh, it's not there. Yeah. How can you tip your Only God can save Nigeria. Only God can save Nigeria. Yeah. Please show the book, Only God Can Save Nigeria. Dek nigger. Yeah. So I, I want them to get that book. This is going to be one of the very, very top, the leading uh, national transformation book that anybody is ever going to be able to read. Only God can save Nigeria. What a myth. And I think you have another book on spearheading national yes, transformation. Tra spearheading national transformation. Spearheading national transformation. transformation. Yeah. That is on Amazon also. I think so. Okay. I think so. Okay. But Church Shift is good for national transformation. Nigeria and the leadership question okay. is good. Uh, this one is a very Only good God one as well. Nigeria. Yeah, those are the ones I have in English. But in Russian, oh, oh, I have a whole book that is 600 page book that is wow. called, yes, that is called uh, How to Restore a Nation and How to Build a Nation. Wow. So that might be interesting for people. Okay, but it needs to be translated. Yes, and I have another one that is called How to Become a European, or how, how to, not like citizenship, but how to become civilized. Civilized, uh-huh. Awesome. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, if you're the one that asks that question, please go to Amazon or Okada Books and look for Pastor's book, this new release, Only God Can Save Nigeria, What a Meat. You need to read it. Then, spearheading national transformation, too, also by pastor. And you already have two of the others, Nigeria and the leadership question and church shift. Pastor, the next person is saying, though he asked for 10, anyways. <laughs> asked for 10 books. Yeah, top 10. I have more than 10, 10 books. books. I have about 10 books on talking on that topic. Okay. Uh, but they are not in but English they are not yet. In English. 
Sorry about that. Welcome translating more of Pastor's book to English. All right. Then this person saying, Pastor, please, what should a Christian woman do after having two kids for a man? They have a good relationship, but due to circumstances, the man has not paid her bride price, and this, this is troubling the woman. What can she do? I didn't pay any bride price. What? <laughs> I don't think I paid any bride. I can't remember. But you went to her. You went to Not Pastor Moses' home. I didn't go. My my relatives maybe. I Them, they pay the bride price. Then. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I can't remember. I paid anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what happened there. Probably they <laughs> probably they did the traditional rites. You know, traditional rite is big in Nigeria. Africa, let's say Nigeria to be precise, especially the area where I come from. It's a big, big, big deal. So, yeah. So, what can this lady do in this situation? Well, I think that the lady knows the situation of her husband better. Yes. And the lady will be able to tell, is it because the man is unwilling or because he cannot afford it? If it is because he cannot afford it, it will be very disheartening to see the pressure coming on him. That could have been resolved before they were married. Okay. And she could have delayed the marriage before, you know, the, that thing is paid. But she went to compromise. She went to compromise. She, and since she has compromised, and if he's not in the position to do it, she was supposed to have think, thought before then. And now that it has happened, if it's because he does, he's unwilling, not because he doesn't have the money, but he's just unwilling, then they have to raise that question between the families. Okay. And she, maybe her family, have to raise the question with his family okay. or with their pastors. Okay. Great, Pastor. Yeah, this person is saying, why are churches moving away from discipleship and more focused on only God's blessings? Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. And that has to be changed. Yeah. That has to be changed. And uh, by the grace of God, you know, when we go back to Nigeria, we're going to be working on that. But what do you think could be the reason for that? What could be the cause? Because people this? are after the crowd. People, okay. because discipleship is not a place where you do miracles and pull, make crowd come to. Okay. It's a place where you work hard. And you have to exercise a lot of patience with people, understanding of people, and lifting. That is hard work, lifting people up. But people rather want to do the miracle on the stage because that's what pulls the crowd. Mm -hmm. Great. Wow. This person said, I'm 22 years old. In 2013, I met a girl on Facebook. We became friends and went into a dating relationship. During this period, I do visit her. And when I, want to, when I want to go, we kiss each other. But during this time, we never had sex. In 2014, I made a decision to serve God and I gave my life to Christ. And she also did same since then. I told her we need to stop some worldly chats and names like baby, dares, etc. She agreed and we became normal friends. Sir, please, am, am I permitted to marry her when I'm ready for marriage? Why not if you love her enough? Okay. All right. Why not? So if you please, love her. if you love her enough for marriage, Pastor said, go ahead. Yeah. Then the, this person said, I'm at my age, 53, living from Italy to Swiss and not having any job. How do I add value to my life, myself? Big vision, no money to work. No money, no work. Um, I don't know if that person has been following me on Facebook okay. on my live broadcast. Mm -hmm. I have a series that uh, on my uh, blog um, on my blog sunnadlajablog dot com uh, on the loss of money, on the loss of conversion, on the lo on the wealth of time. If you will go through those three series, they will tr totally change his perspective to job and things like that. Okay, that's great. So uh, that reminds me, if you've not been following Pastor on Facebook, Pastor comes on Facebook twice every day, morning and evening, 7.30 a.m., 7 p.m., British and Nigerian time, 9.30 a.m., 9 p.m., Ukrainian time, 2.30 a.m., 2 p.m., Eastern daily time, New York time. 
So please join Pastor on this live broadcast. It's been an amazing time. You don't want to miss out on these wonderful teachings. And if you're the one that asks these questions, please, you can go to Pastor's blog, sundayadilajablog.com, and get the financial series, listen to all those financial series, and I believe your life will be transformed for the better. We've been get, getting a lot of testimonies from people who are putting those teachings into practice. So you can as well do yourself that favor and you will get the answer to all those questions. Don't forget, if you've not sent in your questions still, please leave your question as a comment under this video you are seeing now. Pastor will answer each and every of your questions. So the faster you do that, the better because as you send in, that is how we are going to answer. So if you want your questions to be addressed, just know you have to send it in fast. And remember, we are closing today, 10 minutes tonight. So stay put and invite your loved ones still. We are still continuing with a wonderful time. I believe you are enjoying yourself. And Pastor is ready to go. So Pastor, the next person is saying, do you know Jesus? Okay. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I think that is a rhetorical question. We should just continue. Oh, okay. Then this person said, how do we know the desire of God concerning our lives, especially in the place of work and purpose? Then is it wise to make a decision from the place of need? For example, I have rent in arrears and school fees to pay, and I have been offered a job in China, and I live in Kenya. Will I miss out on the purpose of God if I make a decision because of circumstance? Uh, everything you've mentioned so far is only about job and about life. You've not mentioned anything about your calling. If by going to China you are going to cease or stop uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life, then, you know, yeah, you might want to ch change that decision. But if you can fulfill God's purpose for your life in China as well, why not? Maybe you need to go. Then you'll be killing two birds with one stone. You'll be meeting your social needs and economic needs, and you will also be uh, serving God. Okay, so how should he handle the situation? Let's say, for instance, his calling is in Kenya, but he doesn't have no job in Kenya, and his, um, his rent and everything he's saying, he has a situation at hand, but he's been offered a job in this other place. So what first, do we, what first, do we first do? First of all, first of all, um, a, man's net, a, a man's worth and net worth are not in what comes from outside or what is around him, okay. but what is inside of him. Okay. I'll say that again. A man's net worth is not in what is around him but in what is in him. Right. So um, the person can go to China and get a job, but that does not really decide uh, the capacity, the inner worth of the person, net worth. The thing that the person is lacking really is to sit down and load himself from inside and become wealthy inside first. Then when she's wealthy or when he's wealthy inside, then the wealth outside will know his address. But what he's trying to do now is to try to escape the place where there is no wealth, a place. Okay. But a place is always outside. To go to another place which is outside of him where there is wealth. So the person is still chasing after shadows, okay. thinking that your wealth is dependent on what you can get from where you are or from outside. Well, that's exactly what I've just said. That it's the wisest thing to do will be to just sit down in one place first. Create a net worth inside yourself. Create value. Build capacity. Build wealth. That's why my book, Money Won't Make You Rich, is about you become wealthy first through knowledge, through understanding, through the knowing of the laws. Then you are wealthy. Then money will come afterwards. So uh, it's the same thing I would say, tell the, to this person that I told the other person, that go to my uh, blog, blog Sonad Ledger blog, and find those messages, especially the ones on the laws of money, mm -hmm. uh, the time, time conversion. Yeah, yeah, time conversion, I mean, yeah, the wealth of time and conversion. Yes, how to make invisible things visible. 
those will change in the person's perspective. Okay, but Pastor, you know, some people, if they might have this knowledge, they are ready to do it. But the pressing need of the now, it's what is pushing them. When I say, okay, your landlord is about to equate you from your house and you're going to be homeless, you're going to be on the street. So the person they is They cannot saying, have this knowledge and be in that situation. It's because they don't have this knowledge. That's yes, why that is why they're already in this situation. Yes. So what should be the first step towards correcting that before getting the knowledge since okay. they're already in this situation? The Bible says that the, a wise man starts every enterprise with knowledge. Yes. A wise man does not move, does not walk with his hands and his feet. He first of all works with his mind. Okay. So the first thing I would like him to do is that what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So he should not be, you know, bow to the pressure from the outside, yeah. but just sit down and first of all build something then it will discover because what you should do first i also said it there yes and what you should do first is maybe he has eight hours a day to work let him give maybe five hours to or six hours to work in just any job temporarily to get some some, some money. money and but most of the time maybe three hours or four hours building himself, himself. but he knows for a short he knows it just for a short time and you know, as so long as he builds himself fast enough, he will be able to put together some plans and strategies of what to do, and to be able to quit that temporary job he's doing, and be able to b build a net, uh, uh, yeah, a product for himself. Wow, amazing, great mm -hmm. answer. So if you are the one that asked that question, first of all, Pastor is saying you need to build yourself. You need to sit down and begin to look inside into you and you know be rich on the inside first of all so go to pastor's blog and get this series it will greatly transform you because pastor did a detailed analysis in all those series step by step on what you can do you will do yourself good if you listen to those messages thank you so much pastor for your detailed answer then this person is saying pastor sir what must I do to have you endorse my book? The title of the book is A Critical Roadmap to Career Guidance and Entrepreneurship. Yeah, uh, let the person send the book. Yeah. My email is pastor at godembassy.org. Okay. So please, if you are the one that asked the question, send your book to pastor's email, pastor at godembassy.org. Pastor will see through your book, then will decide on what to do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your question and for your answer, Pastor. Wow, this question is pretty long. This person is saying, Dear Pastor Sunday Adelaja, I'm an apostle who just started ministry six months back, and I take you as my spiritual father because I sleep listening to your message, and I believe I can do what you have done in Europe, here in Africa, in the next five years, because I have always dreamt being with you, um, with you in Africa, I've always dreamt being with you, you teaching me, you leading me in a path, and so on. That's why I dearly follow you. My request is simple How can I get you to start bringing your resources here in Uganda for other ministers also to get those life transforming messages? Besides, besides that one thing, I have always wanted to understand is that, be, sorry, besides. That one thing I've always wanted to understand is that when you started with those drunkards and the drug addicts, how did you manage to get finances to facilitate them? Because I'm also doing that, though it has really turned me into pieces financially. I need that wisdom of how to get the finances in place because that has always been my challenge in what I have been doing. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your great work. Okay. First of all, the person says, it's my disciple. Yes. And he wants to be able to uh, replicate me. Yes. And um, do what I've done here in Europe, in Uganda, in Africa. That's right. Okay. And then he says he just started ministry six months ago. Yes. And he's already an apostle. Yes. Okay. And he said he sleeps and wakes up listening to me. Yes. Okay. First of all, I think I doubt his, uh, his acclaim, acclamations. Okay. Uh, if you s wake up and sleep, maybe it's a figurative speech he's using, but if he wakes up and sleeps listening to my message, he will first of all find out that I'm not the title type. And if you want to replicate, uh, duplicate me and replicate me, 
And how can you replicate what I'm not? I'm not the title kind of guy. Even though in practice, I'm an apostle myself. But I don't even call myself apostle after 20 something years in ministry. And this person, that is, if just 36 months ago, he's already got the title of an apostle. He's not even a pastor, not teacher, not prophet, not something, but an apostle himself. <laughs> that doesn't show me too much. And it doesn't prove too much to me that that person has been following me as much as he has been. I think he has not followed me enough. <laughs> Pastor, maybe he had been an apostle and he's starting a new ministry or something. He didn't state that, but I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, since he, he's an apostle for, for long, why is it that he cannot find food for bread and butter? What you are just talking about right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think that person has not listened to me enough. I don't doubt that he has been listening to me. Okay. But he has not caught all my spirit yet. That's one thing. Secondly, uh, if um, he has really followed me well, mm -hmm. he will have been familiar with my books and my teachings on finances. Okay. And he, know, he will have known that people, by the time you finish listening to me, you don't begin to talk about how to find something to feed yourself or other people. You are talking about, I went to become a billionaire. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the kind of thought you'll be thinking. Wow. That's right. Uh -huh. So uh, that thing that person is claiming, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying the way it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let him go and listen to at least 200 messages first. Wow. So mm. he should go get 200 of your messages and listen to it if yes. he wants to replicate what you have no, done. No, that's going to be not enough to replicate. Oh, okay. No, no. For him to, to listen to 200 messages, that will only get him to know me. Okay. Okay. And he will only get to know my mindset and my philosophy of ministry. Okay. But that is not enough to replicate. Okay. To replicate... He will need to listen to me for at least 10,000 hours. Okay. So yeah. that is like 10,000 messages. Wow. Or at least 5,000. Either through books or through messages. Okay. Or through articles. Okay. Okay. His next segment of the question is asking how you could get your materials to Uganda so other ministers can have access to it and your messages too. He wants to get it to Uganda? How you can... How he you wants to get it? He wants to do it? Mm, he didn't state that. He said, how can, okay, how can you start bringing your resources here in Uganda? You. I don't have time. I'm not going to bring my resources anywhere. Anybody who is interested, let them, let them look for it. Okay. I, you know, I'm not but do we have a representative in Uganda? Yeah, I'm sure we should. I'm sure there should be. Okay. But there is somebody in Nigeria who takes care of the whole of Africa. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm sure he would know how to answer that question. But I'm not bringing my, research, I mean, uh, my material. I'm not, you know, uh, you know <laughs> it is one thing for you to be trying to sell your book and to be trying to bring your you know, material somewhere or the other. But <laughs> I've passed that stage. So what I'm doing is I create demand for myself and anybody who needs me will come and get me. So I just got an invitation. Somebody said, come to that India, come to this other place. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. The only place I'm going to now is Nigeria. <laughs> Understood. But is it possible that the person in charge in Nigeria, is it possible to maybe give the contacts to, of this person? Yes, if here, he writes to me, it's... to my email. I don't okay. remember the telephone now or email. Okay, so he can write to you. Yes. So please, if you're the one that asked the question and you really want to get pastor's material to Uganda, you could write to pastor, to, you can write to pastor's email, pastor at godembassy.org asking for that contact and pastor will give you the contact of the person in charge of africa and pastor's materials will be sent to you but on the other hand pastor wants you to go to his blog 
on pastor's blog pastor has over 500 free messages both audios and video vlogs you could listen to as many as possible in order to be able to know pastor and know his philosophy of ministry so you could begin to prepare yourself in line to doing what he has done because if you do not know him then it's not possible for you to be able to do what he's done thank you pastor for the answer then this person is saying how can one overcome the attitude of having bad thoughts all the time, even to the extent of a voice speaking blasphemy against God in, his, in this man? Yes, thoughts don't come from nowhere. Okay. Unlike what that person is thinking. All right. They don't come from the air, and they don't come from the atmosphere. <laughs> okay. Thoughts have a, uh, a sequence to, it, to them. And thoughts come from what you see, uh -huh. what you hear, what you read, and what you allow to enter into your mind. So thought is a result of what your eyes have seen before, one time or the other, or you have read, or you have watched, or what you've heard. So to change the thoughts that are in your mind, you need to change your focus. You need to change what you are exposed to, what you listen to, and what you hear, and what you see. Wow. So you are in charge of regulating the yes. thoughts you have. So yes. for that to change, you have to begin to change the things you're listening to, what you're opening yourself up to. Yes, you have to change the source. The source, okay. Of the the source of thought is not in the mind. Uh-huh, I get it. Wow. So if you're the one that asks that question, so... Pastor, Explain to the person, yeah. Yeah, Pastor is saying that first of all, you have to put a check on what you allow into you. The things you read, the things you listen to, the information you have, discussions you engage in, because your thoughts does not just come from the air. They come from these things, the things you're exposed to. So if you want a change in that thing, then... Change what you're hearing, change what you're allowing to your system, change what you're reading, and change what you are watching and conversations you're indulging in order to be able to have your thought pattern changed. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Then, now people talk about thought as if uh, it's something that comes to abstract. them independently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And some of that thing is coming from their mind or from their head just by itself. Okay. It's not true. You know, but. In sometimes, um, I know some people have the philosophy of the devil brings thoughts into your heart. Um, when the, the Bible is talking about strongholds, that they are thoughts and everything. So in that case, it's not necessarily what the person read, but the devil brought the thought. It's What's not your possible. stand on it's that? It's not possible. Okay. The so, so devil cannot bring any thought to your mind that you have not already known by yourself before. Uh-huh. Okay, for example... What is the last uh, word that's the Spanish word that Satan brought to your mind? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. You tell me. Maybe in Japanese. Or maybe in Chinese. <laughs> but let's start with Spanish. <laughs> what is the last thought that Satan is? Because Satan is everywhere but that has brought to your mind in Spanish. Mika, you talk to me in Spanish. <laughs> Why is it that all the blasphemy <laughs> and all the blood thing that people say that brings to them is only bring in their own language and the language they know? Why can they bring it in Azerbaijani language, for example? <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what you are saying is that it's not possible that the devil could bring thoughts into the. It's possible, but it doesn't bring it from outside you. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, I'm getting the connection now. So it's, it has to be what you have premeditated or probably what has been in your heart. One time or the other. Uh -huh. That's what Jesus was trying to say when he said that it is not what is coming from outside yes. that defies a man. Okay. But it is what comes from inside of it. Okay. There is nothing that could come from outside that would defy it. It's because it has, Satan cannot bring something from outside. That's the point Jesus is trying to make. Okay. It's only come from the thing that was already resident in you. You've exposed yourself to it one way or the other, one, one time or the other. Wow. So the devil just magnifies it. Could we use that yeah, word? Yeah. The devil could make you to focus on the wrong things. OK. 
Okay. Then it gets magnified. Uh-huh. But the devil will not magnify it. Will not magnify. It has to be you that will focus <laughs> on it. We, so yeah, he will not do it without that, me. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're still in charge until you yes. give him that permission. Yes. All, all yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you so much for the answer. <laughs> I believe if you're the one that asked that question, you've gotten your answer. Thank you so much, Pastor. Then this person is saying, Hi, Pastor. I'm a member of Guiding Light Assembly, Lagos, Nigeria. Your friend, Pastor Wale Adifarasin, is my pastor. My question is, preaching a gift, a talent, or a calling? My question, my question is, preaching a gift, yeah, a talent, or a calling? So the reason I ask this is, most often I see myself preaching, teaching to people when I am in my living room or bathroom, even on the street, talking to myself as if I am a mad person. Is preaching a gift, a talent, or a calling? It's a calling. Okay. And I want to use this opportunity to say that you've got a great pastor. If your pastor is Pastor Wale Adefarasin, uh, he's a man that I deeply respect. As a matter of fact, that new book that I just showed you yeah. about the uh, only God only can, God save, can Nigeria, save Nigeria, what it means? he's one of the people that endorsed that book oh, for me. Oh, wow. Awesome. So uh, Wale Adefarasin is a man that I greatly respect. You are in a great church. Yeah, wow. So it's a calling. Yes. Awesome. All right. So I believe you got your... That is the reason why I say it's a calling. It's just out of the three churches I was given. I'm mm -hmm. just following his, his, uh, his, his script. Okay. But if I'm supposed to describe it, I might describe it differently. But from one of Maybe the... Maybe we might just, enjoy your description. But from what he said, he's asking me if it is gift, talent, or calling. Yeah. So I chose the last one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what would be your description if you're describing? Of what? Of preaching. Preaching? Mm -hmm. uh, if without those three something. Preaching could be an act, an, uh, an art. Preaching could be a calling. Preaching could be a gift. Okay. Preaching could be a talent. Preaching could be um, a skill. Okay. Hmm. Preaching could be a skill. So you could acquire the skill of preaching even though you were not called to preach. That's oh. why you see okay. Hollywood actors. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Maybe you have seen that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even Hollywood. <laughs> and they do a good job. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah, they at it well. <laughs> Wow, awesome, Pastor. Then, I believe you got your answer in double portion. But, this but concerning him in particular, the yeah. reason why you see yourself preaching and acting is because the calling of God is betting on you. Okay, that's the reason for that yes. consistency yes. for him. Yes. So, yeah, so for you, preaching is a calling. This person is saying, how can one overcome the attitude of having... Okay, I think we answered this. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. We, we actually did not complete this question. You talked about... I don't know what how question you are talking about. You no, know, how can one overcome the attitude of having bad thoughts, right? So we talked about where the thoughts come from, but how can he overcome That's what he exactly overcoming? what I said. So he should change, just change what he's listening to. He should change the source of bad thoughts. Okay. Change it to the source of the kind of things you would like to think about begin to listen, to hear, and to read materials that will rather purify him, that will rather bring other, the opposite of what he didn't want. So when the thought now comes, let's say the thought comes now, what should he do? Okay, that is different. Yeah. But instead of him to fight, he could fight it, but instead of him to be fighting thought, it's better for him to deal with it from the root. Okay. Well, the answer I gave earlier is earlier. dealing with it from the root. Uh -huh. But if it's about a fighting one, we can also talk about that. Okay. So <laughs> how does he fight okay. it if he's to fight it? If, they, <laughs> if bad thoughts are coming to you, what to do is that the Bible told the Bible, God himself um, God himself gave the prescription to Cain how to overcome bad thoughts. Okay. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, 
that I think you call it uh, the evil one or something is at your evil door. Is at your door huh? yeah. Evil, evil, is, at evil at your, is at your door. You know, you can overcome it or you know, you don't allow him or, or overcome it or something like that. Evil is at your door. You, the word door means the door of your mind. Right. So the thought that is about to come to your mind, it is your choice either to open. It's like a, picture your mind as a door. Okay. You know, so like you are inside, and some it's something the you no know, the evil thought will always knock, try you out, and you it is your choice either to totally shut the door off or to open it. How do you shut the door off? Mm -hmm. When the thoughts are knocking, just totally ignore it. Okay. Don't open that door. Once you have opened the door, then the battle you can hardly win it. The battle of the mind is almost impossible to win. But even if you have opened it by accident and you started thinking about it, you can still win it, the last option. Okay. The Bible talks about casting down thoughts and imagination. Right. So once it has come, it has to be cast out at that particular moment. So once the, the thought is there, it's just coming in. You just use the name of Jesus to cast it in the name of Jesus. I reject you. I cast you out and forget to think about it. Just take your attention to somewhere else. That is one way you could overcome thought. Another, another way you could overcome thought, thought is thought is a lower dimensional uh, substance to a speech. The reason why you can never over, why we don't no, normally overcome thoughts, is because we try to overcome thoughts through thoughts. Okay. But you know you have thoughts, but when you the thing that is higher than thought, the next level over thought is speech, uh -huh. is to talk. So instead of you to be thinking, when you are thinking and you are trying to fight your good thought to yourself, thought over thought on the level on the same level on the same dimension, you will lose. But the thing you could do is to begin to talk. Wow. And in the name of Jesus, or begin to say something. Like, once you begin to talk, the, the, thought, the dies. thought does, any thought dies, it diminishes. Wow, awesome. Then, if you are talking, the only higher authority or dimension over talk is shout. Uh -huh. So, if someone is talking to you like this, if you begin to shout, nobody will hear what they say. Okay. <laughs> Great. The same thing with thought. Yeah. When you talk, you kill. I mean, when you speak, you kill thought. When you shout, you kill talk. You know, when you talk, you kill thought. But when you want to kill talk, you shout. Okay. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Deep answer, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. It That's sense. great. It's it's. It's, it's actually simple and very straightforward dynamic. I, I believe it, it will work for anyone. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm glad we went to this dimension. We yeah. went to it the <laughs> second time. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, this person is saying, hmm, hello, Pastor. When you study books and the Bible, do you study, um, do you study documents at the same time in a different notepad? How do you study the Bible and other books in order to make the most of it so as to remember and teach what you learned in the book? Sometimes I read a book but can't remember or communicate everything or even up to 30% of what I have learned. How do you read and know everything as though you are the author? <laughs> First of all, you have to read carefully, not to rush. Secondly, make sure you underline the things that are, that are touching you in what you read. If you underline them with a pencil or with a pen, then after you finish going through the book and you finish reading it, then you can go back to that book and then the things that you have already underlined, take time to write them out, mm -hmm. to, you know, to jot them and create a notebook for yourself of, the, of your lessons. Awesome. So, does it need repetition or just one-time reading or? No, yes. For you to, if you really want to know it in memory or to, you know, memorize it, then you will need to go over it until you remember it. Okay. But even if you do the two I've already said, 
you are already more familiar than, than if you didn't. Wow, awesome, Pastor. Thank you so much. This person is saying, is it okay for a person to divorce his second wife to be fit to serve as a bishop according to the Bible? Hmm, we answered that question already. It might be, uh, if that's the rule and the order that the church is placing, put in place. Okay, it's okay. Not to divorce. Yeah. Okay, the second wife the in second order to be a bishop. Okay, great. So, Pastor that's said it's okay. That's if you want to divorce, if you want to be a bishop. Be a bishop. Mm -hmm. But I would rather say, why should you be a bishop? You know, uh, but keep the lady, but not as a wife living sexually, but just taking care of her. Okay. All right. This person is saying, Pastor, what do you do to dis to disciple sinners? Is it? I think is it disciple or discipline sinners? What do you do to disciple sinners? Sorry, disciple sinners, fraud boys, especially when the soul winner is a lady. Um. You know that might not be the best things to do. If you are a lady, the only way you can do that is if you are meeting with them in the church. Okay. Or if you have more official place where you are meeting with them, then you could do that. Okay. So your discipleship or training with them should be in the church or in an open place. Yes, yes. Okay. But, um, all right. Then this person is saying, why do some people quote Bible verses but do the opposite? Um, because the, the, pers the pers person too is human, mm -hmm. and all of us are human. The only person, I mean, the only thing we could say is, the only thing I want to say to that person is, you have the right to ask, to ask that question if you are different. Uh -huh. But I'm not sure that person who is writing that one is different. Because we are all doing the same thing. We all make the same mistake. Not mistake, but we all commit the same fault. We are all guilty of that. There is no way that every scripture you quote, you have succeeded in leaving them out. There will still be one time or the other, or one scripture or the other that you quote, that you have not been able to work on. Okay. But you still have to quote it because it's the truth. So what authenticates the word of God or scripture is not the fact that you are doing it or you are not doing it. It is the word of God. It stands alone. It's not you doing it or not doing it that makes it work. In fact, the person who might be quoting it or you might not be doing it, and the person who we hear will, be, will do it and, be, and even get saved. saved. In fact, you, an unbeliever could quote the scripture. Somebody will get saved and it's still an unbeliever. Wow. Because wow. the, the word of God stands on its own. Great. Great pastor. Yeah, this person is saying, what should a woman with children do if the father of the children is delaying in marrying her and she is getting frustrated? Uh, if the father of the children is not your husband, it's not your husband. Mm -hmm. You are free. If you are not married, you are not married. You belong to yourself. Okay. You just have to repent of the sin you have committed and then live your life right and straight. Okay, so... She can marry any other person. Even yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Great. I believe you gave the answer. Yeah, this person is saying, Dear sir, his first question is, is the Bible all about kingdom from Genesis to Revelation? Two, how is it possible for a born-again believer to work with God? No, no, it has to be. They are different questions. So let's start one by okay, one. Okay, so is the Bible all about kingdom from Genesis to Revelation? Yes. Okay. Then, um, how is it possible for a born again believer to work with God and still be friendly with the Word? I think the best, we should reverse that order. I think the born again believer mm -hmm. should rather be friendly with God and work with the Word. Okay. Okay. When you are on earth, make sure you become a friend of God. That's your, ta that's your most important target, uh, target yeah, goal in life. Mm -hmm. And then you can work and live in the world and with the world. Fellowship and talk with them, you know, relate with the world, but be a friend of God, not a friend of the world. Hmm. Amazing. So the reverse is the case. You have to be a friend of God yes. and work. Yes with the word or walk yeah. in the word yes. right 
Great. Um, then the third question is said, how many principles are there in the Bible? Is there any best book or article you suggest? Thank you, sir. Richard. Yes, there are many principles in the Bible. But there is a series I did. It's called Life is Predictable. Okay. And Life is a School. Right. They are also there in the daily broadcast video audio on my blog. Okay. So is, is there any book that really categorizes the number of principles in the Bible? Or? I don't have that book, and I don't know if there is or not. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> it's too much to be put in one book. In one book. Wow. Awesome. So, Pastor, this is the last question we are going to give, for you, give to you before we release you to okay. go for your, your next meeting while we continue with the announcement. This person is saying, May the peace of our Lord be with you, Pastor. I am writing from Dubai. Please just want to know how can you know the Lord has heard your prayers when you pray? You believe. You believe first, and then you follow your heart. Is your heart at peace? Then it means he has answered. If you are still worried about it or you are still concerned, keep on praying until you have that peace okay. about it. So it's measured by the peace you have on the inside? That is secondary. It's measured, first of all, by your faith. By your faith. So you have to believe yes. that he has heard you. But if you have difficulty believing, that's when you are having the doubts and the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the moment you pray, you should believe he's heard you. Yes. So that will not lead to the peace. Yes. But sometimes it doesn't. That means that you, they are not, you have not really believed. Uh -huh. So keep on praying until you have that peace. Okay, so the factor now, is it the believing or the keeping on praying? Is it to work on believing or to work on praying? There are two different situations. Some people might uh, be able to believe God immediately for some little things. Mm -hmm. And for more serious things, they might feel that they have, to, you know, they have more doubts. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, about their level of faith at, particular, at a particular junction. Or for, you know, against a particular situation. Wow. Thank you so, so <laughs> much, Pastor. It's been nice being with you today. Thank you for your wealth of knowledge and for blessing us. So we'll gladly release you to attend to your other schedules. Yes, I want to say that, uh, you know, today's been a busy day. Yeah. And it's going to be a very busy day now. And I want to uh, say that uh, as I go now, I'm going to be on calls and international calls and I'm holding important meetings, very important meetings. Yeah. And uh, so I might not be there in the beginning of my next the program. But program. Okay. Well, you still announce Facebook, it. Yeah. Yes, but I will still come. But I, I, might not, I might be there in the beginning, I might not. But if I'm not there in the beginning, I will still come. It's because of what I'm dealing with and the issues I'm trying to resolve across the ocean and across many countries. For Africa and Nigeria. Yes. Thank you so much for your tireless service and sacrifice for our great nation. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor. It's nice you. having you. Thank you. All right. Wow. I believe you've had a wonderful, wonderful time with Pastor today. I don't know about you, but I was blessed. I was richly blessed by this section today. So, right after the show at 9 p.m. Ukrainian time, um, Pastor's Life Facebook show will be on. Remember, today is a testimony day when people come to testify, to tell about what they've been doing with their life practically, you know, to bring the kingdom to earth. So if you've been wondering how can you really practice, you know, what you can do to bring your, the kingdom of God to planet Earth or in your sphere of influence or in your nation or in your city, then you want to stay tuned for this evening with Pastor. People are going to be coming this evening. Someone will be here to tell you about what he or she is doing or has done or still doing and, you know, bringing kingdom to the, his nation or her nation and bringing change to different spheres of influence. So stay put, and you're going to be greatly blessed. I don't know if you are aware that Pastor is moving back to Nigeria for the Nigerian Transformation Project. If you are not aware of this, I would like you to go to Pastor's blog, it's sundayadilajablog.com, 
and register for the Nigerian Transformation Project. Go to the blog, sundayadilajablog.com, register for the Nigerian Transformation Project, and we are going to be getting back to you, keeping you informed on the steps Pastor is taking as regards, regarding that. Like I told you earlier, every day, Pastor comes live on Facebook twice, morning and evening, 7.30 a.m., 7 p.m., British and Nigerian time, 9.30 a.m., 9 p.m., Ukrainian time, Kiev time, and 2.30 a.m., 2 p.m., Eastern Daily Time, New York time, endeavor to join us on each of those times. Make a date with destiny. Have you heard, are you aware that the HM2 is coming for the 6th to the 12th of November? If you have not registered, please write us at guest.embassy.com. Write us at guest at godembassy.org. Send your request writing that you want to participate in the HMT that will be coming up. So please endeavor, endeavor to participate if you have the time. The History Makers training has raised more giants than you can ever think of. If you want to make history in your nation, if you want to make history in your time, then this is the program you have to attend. Make a date with Destiny by attending this program. Pastor will be here live to take the different trainings. I don't know if you've gotten the pastor's latest book yet. Only God can save Nigeria. What a meat. It is available on Amazon, on Kindle, and um, what do you call it? Okadabooks.com for those in Nigeria and Africa, and smashwords.com. If you are not following pastor yet on his YouTube page, please subscribe. His YouTube page is Sunday Adelaja Official, and follow him also on Facebook at Pastor Sunday Adelaja. Don't just follow him on Facebook, but endeavor to subscribe for his notification. So each time Pastor comes live on Facebook, you're going to be notified. Pastor comes online twice every day, as I've said earlier, with different kinds of teaching that will transform your life for the best. So endeavor to follow Pastor on all his social media, and I believe you're going to be blessed. It's been a wonderful show today. And I was your host today, Dr. Bien Sufficient. It was glad. I was, it was an amazing um, time with you. And I'm sure, 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 sure that you were blessed as I was blessed. So stay with us. For same time on Saturday, we are going to be coming your way again. So if you still have some questions that have not been answered, please send those questions to Pastor's blog. The email is pastor at sundayadilajablog.com. And on Saturday, we are going to be starting with your question. Or you could still leave it as a comment under this video you're seeing. Or go to Pastor's YouTube page, whichever one is easier for you, and leave it as a comment on this video too. Under this video too, the YouTube page, like I said earlier, is Sunday Adilaja Official. Thank you so, so much for being with us. I believe you know of Pastor Sweeter. If you are not following Pastor yet, it's at Pastor underscore official, and Instagram is at Sunday underscore Adelaja. Follow Pastor in all of his, his social media, and you are going to be updated on everything Pastor is doing and, you know, the wisdom of God he's sharing. I am so glad to have participated today and i believe too you were blessed so inform your loved ones inform your friends same time on saturday we are going to be here to, again thank you so much for being here god bless you i love you all bye for now <music>